What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video. Today we're going to be going over tanking gear in Dragonhold. So much like the previous videos, this video will be going over just the gear as well as other class agnostic features like race and uh, Mundestones and CPs for tank builds in the Dragonhold patch. For specific skill setups for each of the different classes in the game, you will need to check out each of those class videos which will be found in the, in the description below as they are released throughout uh, the week uh, moving forward. Um, so again, this is just looking at gear, just looking at class agnostic things. So we're going to go ahead and get started here right off the bat with the gear that I'm currently wearing and then we'll be discussing each of the different gear sets in turn, starting with trial sets, moving on to dungeon sets, overland sets, as well as craft sets that kind of fits under the overland sets, monster helm sets, and then we'll talk about other class agnostic things like race, Mundestone, CP points, all that sort of thing. Starting off here first, this is one of my very standard tanking setups here. So for Monster Helm set, we're going with Symphony of Blades. This is a very powerful sustain tool here. It does require you to have some form of heal that would be able to heal somebody else. So for certain classes, this comes naturally based on your self heal. So for example, uh, Wardens, one of your self heals is Polar Wind, which can hit other people. Dragonites might use Cinder Storm, which is an AOE heal, which you could place on somebody else, a DPS stack, for example, to give them uh, the a resource return from Symphony of Blades. So if you are running this set, just be mindful that you do need to run a heal for everybody else because you can't proc it on yourself. Symphony of Blades is a fairly difficult launch helm set to obtain coming from Depths of Maltar, so there are some alternatives that we'll be going over in a few minutes. For our first set here, we're going with Ebon Armory. This is a base game set from Crypt of Hearts. This is probably one of the strongest support sets in the game right now that you can give uh, as a tank. And five piece bonus adds some max health, 1000 max health before any other modifiers like CP points and minor toughness, uh, which is actually pretty substantial. It ends up being roughly about a 1.3k increase in the health, which does help out overall group survivability. So if Ebon will help prevent group wipes, then why not run Ebon Armory here? So even though it doesn't seem like a lot of health, it does actually make a difference in uh, trials environments. It less allows the DPS to kind of focus in more on doing damage rather than focusing in on, uh, you know, padding up their health. The second set that I typically run is going to be Alkosh. This comes from Maw of Lorkaj. Uh, and this is a medium armor set, so you will need to run this on the jewelry and the weapons. While it is possible to run a medium armor tank, it's not something I usually recommend. That's something reserved for very advanced tanks that are really trying to push the limits of tanking to you know, get speed runs and score runs for the various trials in the game. Alkosh is also one of the strongest support sets in the game that a tank can wear. That 5-piece bonus, when you activate a synergy, you send out a shockwave that deals a certain amount of physical damage and reduces the physical and spell resistance of any enemy hit by 3010 for 10 seconds. This resistance reduction is stackable, uh, or I should say it does stack with things like Major Fracture and Major Breach. So a very, very powerful tool here for penetration. Uh, without Alkosh, it's actually a little bit fairly difficult to get the penetration cap in PvE. So this is definitely a set I recommend all tanks pick up. Um, sometimes you will not be wearing this set. Uh, this is still a set that you will see in 9 out of 10 fights uh, with a tank. Uh, the only instance where Alkosh might not be used would be in Sunspire. And that's just because of the nature of the trial itself. It's not because Alkosh is a bad set. It's just that the way you're tanking Sunspire doesn't really lend to a very good Alkosh uptime, so it's better placed on a DPS in that instance. In terms, before we go over other gear sets, we're going to go over enchants and traits. Uh, so for weapons, we have Sword and Board on the front bar and Ice Staff on the back bar. You can also go with a Lightning Staff or a Bow, depends on kind of what you want to fit in. Uh, no matter what, on your back bar, it's always going to be infused, and you will typically have a Crusher Enchant here, but this might vary depending on which support sets are running which enchant. So you might be replacing this with a different enchant, for example, a Shock Enchant to help with Concussed uptime, which would help with Off-Balance uptime. Uh, you could be running a Weakening Enchant instead, uh, so just... Keep in mind that Crusher Enchant is usually what you're going to go with, but you might 
need to swap out enchants depending on how your raid lead wants to divide up enchants among all your support roles. But no matter if you're doing an ice staff, lightning staff, or bow, you will always be running infuse on the back bar for a stronger enchant. Ice staves give you some additional mitigation when you're blocking on it, so it does give you a little bit of padding if you're ever caught having to block a heavy attack on your back bar. Lightning staffs allow you to use lightning block aid, which helps out with off-balance uptime, which is pretty useful. And then the bow bar, generally speaking, is more for tanks that want to do a little bit more DPS, just because tanking, you usually have a little bit higher stamina, so you do a little bit more damage with your bow abilities, which scale off of your max stamina instead. So if you're kind of want to fit into that sort of off DPS role, a bow is going to be your best option for the back bar. And in that instance, you might be running something like the Maelstrom bow or the Master's bow, depending on how much DPS you want to do and how much tanking is really necessary. For your front bar, sword and board, is usually what you should be going for here. There, you will always be having the sword and board on at least one of your bars, just because it gives you the best mitigation in the game. There are some cases where you might be able to make do with two ice staffs, for example, but those are very, very rare instances. I personally have never seen a situation where you would not be running sword and board on any bar. So tanks that like that want to run two ice staves, while it is possible, I do not recommend doing so, just because it has a lot of limitations in place there that you don't really have with a sword and board so for enchants and traits on your one-handed doesn't really matter which type of one hand you get you can have a sword dagger axe mace doesn't really matter because you're not really dpsing so uh, for one-handed shield you don't any get any sort of unique bonuses for running any specific weapon style so for enchant, very similar to your back bar, a lot of different options here. You will not typically be running something like a crusher enchant. Instead, you will usually be running something like a shock enchant, a weakening enchant. Enchants that, while useful, uh, you kind of are all right having a half damage, half strength enchant versus like a crusher enchant where it'd be cut in half. So it's not quite as effective. You want to make sure to have that full strength crusher enchant here. So weakening, shock, absorb health, absorb stamina, absorb magicka. Those are the types of enchants you would run on your front bar here on your sword board bar. For traits, not a lot of good options because they're half as effective compared to on a uh, two-handed staff, for example. Decisive is one of the kind of better options, but you could also go with something like Charged if you're running a Shock Damage Glyph on the back bar to help improve Concussed uptime to help improve Off Bounce uptime. For your shield, sturdy with a prismatic enchant. You could also go with infused if you'd like, or nurn honed for additional uh, resistances or additional um, resources from your prismatic enchant. But sturdy is typically what you will see being run on tanks. For jewelry, uh, your enchant is typically speaking going to be one of two enchants. Either going to be the bracing enchant, which reduces the cost of block, or a magic of regen enchant. Usually you'll be going with the Bracing Enchant just because reducing the cost of block is usually more important than Magicka Regen, especially because you will typically be using Balance in order to get your Magicka back up. So reducing cost of block is usually going to be the better uh, Enchant of choice here. And then for Trait, you have a few options. So I like to go with one Harmony just to get some more resources out of my Orbs and Shard synergies. But you don't have to run Harmony if you don't want to. It's usually seen as one of the weaker options, but it is a fairly decent option in my opinion. Then you have Triune, which is basically a Prismatic Enchant for your Jewelry, which is always nice to have being able to get both Max Magicka, Max Health, and Max Stamina. You could also go with just raw max health, so that'd be healthy, stamina would be robust, or magic would be arcane, to kind of play on how many resources you, you want to have. And then you can also go with infused if you just want stronger enchants. So again, few options here for traits on your jewelry pieces. Now for traits and enchants on your armor, again, a couple of options. Your small pieces will always be sturdy. Your enchants can be either max health enchants, Max Magicka, Max Stamina, or even Prismatic Enchants, depending on how you want to play around with your max resource pool. Your large pieces can be either infused or sturdy, depending on whether you want the additional resources. You'll always have a Prismatic Enchant on your large pieces, though. Um, so that'd be your chest, legs, and head. And you will notice that we are going 5-1-1 here, so we have 5 heavy pieces, 1 medium, and 1 light. And that's just to get some additional resources out of the Undaunted passive, uh, which gives you an additional 6% resources because you have 3 different armor types. Next, going over other sets that you could be wearing. First, going over trial sets. 
not a lot of trial sets to run. The one that I would recommend you pick up, which is almost ne necessary as a tank, is going to be Claw of Mjolnir Queen, which comes from Sunspire. Um, so you can go with the perfect or the imperfect version. The difference is that max health on the 5-piece bonus here. Claw of Mjolnir Queen is the only source of minor courage, and the proc condition is taunting an enemy. So it's not like you can put this on any other uh, role. It has to be on a tank. So this is a very strong set here that you should always have on one of your two tanks or one tank if you are tanking uh, just using one tank. So definitely a set you should pick up if you intend on tanking endgame PvE trials. Uh, beyond that, none of the other heavy armor sets are really worth running because they don't really provide any sort of group utility. That's kind of the focus of a tank in ESO, group utility, not just raw survivability. Uh, in terms of other trial sets, not really that many to, to run. Uh, there are some niche cases where you might want to run something like Old Rime uh, for four-man content uh, in order to provide some um, major courage uptime. Uh, this comes from CloudRest, and again, very niche uses. It's going to be more for four-man content where you want to run three DPS and one tank, so you still want to have a source of major courage, so that's when you would run Old Rime. Light armor set, so you will need to run jewelry and weapons. So if you are one of those groups that does do four-man content, four-man achievements, and you intend on doing three DPS, one tank, it might be a good idea to try to get all the Rime. There's two versions, perfect and imperfect. Doesn't really matter which one you pick up. The difference is that lack of the max magic bonus on the five piece. Going over dungeon sets, there are a handful of dungeon sets that are good to pick up. So before we go over heavy armor sets, I want to touch upon a medium armor set and a light armor set you should pick up as a tank. So as a tank, you want to pick up Hercene's Veneer, which comes from Selene's Web. Medium armor set, so just like Olorime and Alkash, you want to have this on jewelry and weapons. Uh, so this reduces the cost of stamina abilities by 4% for you and up to 11 other group members. So just helps out your stamina DPS sustain, and also helps out your sustain as well, because this does reduce your own abilities uh, in it as well. If you're running in an all Magicka group, Hercene is not going to be quite as useful, so you typically will drop Hercene in all Magicka groups. This is definitely more used if you have a lot of stamina DPS or are evenly split 4 and 4, for example. The Light Armor Dungeon set is essentially the Magicka version of Hercene's Veneer, known as, if I can find it here, Worms Raymond. So this comes from Vaults of Madness, so both Hercene and uh, Worms are both base game sets. Uh, Worm is a Light Armor set, so you will have to get jewelry and weapons, um, so just keep that in mind. You will need to transmute to these two pieces here, the jewelry at the very least, if you intend on using these sets. Again, this is the Magicka version of Hercene, so it reduces the cost of magic abilities by 4% for your entire group. Uh, again, kind of the polar opposite of Hercene's. Very good for all Magicka groups, not very strong for all stamina groups. So just kind of pay attention to your overall group DPS composition, how many Magicka, how many stamina, and decide whether you're running both of these sets among your four support rules, or you're just running one of these two sets among your support rules. Now we can talk about some heavy armor and dungeon sets. Not a lot, but I do want to kind of point out uh, some of the more useful ones. Uh, so going down the line here, the first one I want to mention is going to be Leeching Plate, which is a selfish set here. This comes from Imperial City Prison and it just deals uh, poison damage to anybody who deals damage to you. You have a percent chance to proc it and also heals you for the amount of poison damage that you deal. So really great for situations where you just need the raw survivability in ad pulls. So Black Rose Prison is a good example of where Leeching Plate is really useful here. Another good set, which is also selfish, is going to be Jailer's Tenacity. So when you lose 7,000 or more health from a single attack, you gain major vitality for 5 seconds. Uh, as a tank, obviously, you will be taking some big hits. And some of these big hits, major vitality is going to be very important in order to get you healed back up. The big example of this would be Baneful Mark in Cloud Rest because it also comes with a uh, healing debuff as well. So the major vitality that you get from Jailer's Tenacity would help kind of offset that healing debuff. This comes from Moon Hunter Keep, so this is a DLC set, uh, much like Leeching Plate. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you want to get Jailer's Tenacity. It is a selfish set, so you don't necessarily have to farm for it, but it is nice for progression-style runs. 
Next, we have Dragon's Defilement, which comes from Lair of Marsalock. So whenever you take damage from a melee attack, you have an aura that applies Minor Fracture and Minor Breach to all enemies around you. So this is essentially an AoE Minor Fracture Minor Breach. So really, really great if you don't have any sort of Stamina Templar or a Templar Healer for some reason. Or if you do, even if you have a Templar Healer or a Stamina Templar who is able to provide these two debuffs via Power of Delight, they can only apply it to one enemy at a time, so they have to cast it five times to hit five enemies. Versus just wearing Dragon's Defilement, just taking that melee hit, and then you have an AoE Minor Fracture Minor Breach. So a really great set uh, for trash pulls. Not really that great for uh, boss fights, especially if you have a Templar that's able to use Power of the Light. Next, Overland sets and Crafted sets. Uh, in terms of heavy uh, Overland sets, there are a handful that are pretty decent. Plague Doctor is another selfish heavy armor set from Deshaun. It just adds straight up max health. So if you're progressing content, you just want to be a little bit more survivable, Plague Doctor is pretty much the best set that you can get. Just raw health here. Uh, the next set is going to be Akavari Dragon Guard, which comes from East March and reduces the cost of your ultimate abilities by 15%. This basically reduces the cost of your Warhorn, which gives you greater major force uptime. Not a whole lot of in increase in overall uh, DPS, but it still is a DPS increase, and if you don't have really any other set to run, Akavari Dragon Guard is always a good fallback. Uh, and then uh, going from there, that's pretty much all of them. Uh, Central Defender has arguably a, uh, a use for sustain, but there are, are better ways to sustain, so I wouldn't really recommend running Central Defender here. Uh, and then there are a couple of, uh, I think there is a medium overland set I want to cover and then a light overland set that's also good to pick up. So in terms of medium overland set, the one I want to talk about here, if I can find it, is going to be Hide of the Werewolf. So whenever you take damage, you generate 5 ultimate every 5 seconds. Uh, so this is nice to kind of generate more ultimate, get faster Warhorn up times. Kind of fits the same mode as Aquavir Dragon Guard, just in a medium armor form and in a different way. So in that regard, uh, you will have to get jewelry and armor. Uh, but this is a base game set that comes from Glenumbra. And then finally, uh, for Overland sets, you have Way of Martial Knowledge, which comes from Craglorn. So another base game set here. Light armor, so again, jewelry weapons. Uh, while your stamina is below 50%, your light attacks cause the enemy to take 8% additional damage for 5 seconds. This effect can occur once every 8 seconds. Not usually something you would wear on a tank just because of that stamina limitation. Uh, stamina is what I like to call the lifeblood of a tank. It's what you need to taunt, it's what you need to use heroic slash, it's what you need to block. So maintaining that sub 50% stamina can be a little bit stressful at times. So it's not something you usually recommend tanks to wear. But it is an option. I have run it on a tank before. It's just not something that I personally would recommend running on a tank. And most support roles also agree that Way of Martial Knowledge is better put on a healer rather than a tank. But it is an option if you do want to decide to go that route. Finally, for crafted sets, there is a crafted set that I would like to mention here, which is pretty decent. And that is going to be Orog's Pact. So this decreases weapon enchant cooldown and increases non-oblivion damage enchant potency by 30%. This is going to be combined with your Crusher enchant to basically make it a little bit stronger. It gives you 2740 for your Crusher enchant rather than 2108. So a little bit of an increase, but still an increase, so you still want to run this. This is a base game craftable set. It requires you to know three traits in order to craft it, or you can just buy it off guild traders or commission someone to craft it for you. Pretty simple, pretty easy to get, um, and is actually... Pretty overall, pretty nice. You will usually see this being worn uh, on your tank uh, as kind of like a. I don't really have any other set to run. Uh, the bonuses are also pretty decent as well, so definitely a set that I would recommend picking up uh, as a tank. Um, next, for Monster Helm sets, you have a few options for Monster Helm sets here. Obviously, we talked about Symphony of Blades, um, starting from the top and moving our way down. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about uh, is actually going to be Shadowrend, not because of the two-piece effect, but because of the one-piece effect of the additional Magicka regen. Again, I'm of the opinion that you don't need to stack Magicka regen as a tank any longer because of balance, but if you want to run two one-piece Magicka regen pieces, Shadowrend is going to be one of those pieces that has Magicka regen on the one piece. The other one is going to be Chokethorn, so you would run one-piece Chokethorn, one-piece Shadowrend, but again, not a lot of tanks run this at all because of the existence of balance. So it's an option, but generally speaking, going to be the weakest combination of monster helms. 
terms of actual true Marsh Helms that you're going to want to wear. Uh, the first one is going to be Lord Warden, which is a classic, classic tanking set. This comes from POC Prison, uh, and just adds a lot of resistances, not just for yourself, but also to everybody within 8 meters of you whenever you take damage. So really helpful for overall group survivability, so definitely a set to pick up. Uh, this is a classic go-to, I don't really have any other set to run, Marsh Helm set. Next set is going to be Bloodspawn, which is going to be one of the only Marsh Helm sets that I would recommend you pick up if you only have access to the base game Marsh Helm sets. This comes from Spindle Clutch 2. The One Piece adds stamina regen, which isn't all that useful because when you're blocking, your stamina regen is zero. It's mostly for the two-piece, which gives you, which has a chance to generate ultimate whenever you take damage. You're not really going to be running it for the additional resistances that are gained by this uh, by this proc. You're really going for the ultimate generation, which gives you more warhorns, which gives you greater major force uptime. The next set is going to be Thervican. Uh, whenever you take damage, you create a pool of bile which applies minor maim minor defile and deals some disease damage so this is a very good source of aoe minor maim depending on the class you might not have a source of aoe minor maim so for example dragon knights and necromancer tanks you guys do have a source of aoe minor maim so thervican might not be as useful on those two classes but for classes that don't have an aoe minor maim thervican is a awesome way to apply it really great for trash pulls not so great for single target boss fights Next we have Vicosa, which is really strong uh, in terms of just, you have Major Maim on demand. So whenever you bash an enemy you've taunted, uh, you apply Major Maim to them for 3 seconds, and you can do this every 15 seconds. So really great, the only source of Major Maim comes from Ultimates, and this is basically a on-demand Major Maim for 3 seconds every 15 seconds. Really good if you're progressing content. It does require you to kind of know when to bash. So for example, in Sunspire, if you know when the dragon's going to be using their fire breath, that's when you would use the bash and get the major maim on the fire breath. So that way you can uh, take less damage from it and you know relieve some pressure off of your healer. Definitely a great set to pick up here. Next we have Stonekeeper, which is my personal favorite for uh, resource, personal uh, selfish resource sustain here. So whenever you block an attack, you gain an energy charge stack up to 1 stack per second, and when you gain 6 charges, you release the energy, restoring 5350 stamina and magicka, and healing for the same amount. The number you see here is affected by CP, so that's why it's a little bit higher. Once you release the charges, you cannot regain new charges for 14 seconds. If you go ahead and do the math, that ends up being a little bit more than 260 resources per second, assuming you're able to block once a second and you're able to do this on cooldown. It's a really great set for personal sustain. This is one of my personal favorites uh, if I just need just raw selfish sustain. Uh, and that's pretty much it for most Helm sets. So again, all of these sets will be found in the description below. Uh, as well as where to find them uh, and what kind of where you want to put them. So some sets are going to be worn on the body, other sets you can wear uh, as weapons and jewelry. So those will be the light armor, medium armor sets. So I'll just denote those in the description below for you guys. In terms of other things you want to pay attention to, in terms of other class agnostic stuff, for race, I am a dark elf just because I like playing dark elves. In in actuality, the best race for tanks would be Nords and Imperials. Nords because they get max stamina, max health, and they get some additional ultimate back whenever they take damage. Imperials because they also get max stamina, max health, and they get 3% cost reduction to all abilities, as well as some resource return, magic health, and stamina back whenever they deal damage. Orcs are also a common choice for endgame tanks that kind of want to do some additional DPS because they get the max stamina, a little bit of max health, as well as weapon damage. So more for score pushing, speed running guilds, uh, or for orcs. But a race in orcs, the ratio bonuses that you get aren't really that impactful when it comes to your overall effectiveness as a tank. I personally tank on a Dark Elf, and I've cleared all the content in the game, all on hard modes, so not really that big of an impact in terms of race. Um, but again, the most common races that you'll see as tanks are going to be Nords, Imperials, Argonians, because they get 4,000 resources back whenever they drink any potion. So that's Magicka, Health, and Stamina, 4,000 each, no matter what potion you drink. So it just helps out to sustain that way. Those are the three most common races, and other races are kind of mixed in there. But again, I'm one of the, one of the prescribers that race doesn't really make that big of an impact on your tanking ability. For attributes, this is going to vary depending on your race as well as your class, because some classes do have passives that do boost your overall health. So for example, here I have 40 health, 14 stamina, 10 magicka. 
the general rule of thumb that you want to go for is for max health, you want to hit around 35,000 max health with Ebon, with toughness. And then you always want to have your max stamina pool higher than your max magicka pool. That way you're returning stamina back whenever you use an orb or shard synergy. I like to shoot for at least 20,000 stamina and magicka, uh, but you can kind of play around with that as you see fit. So as you see here, we have 35.8k with Ebon without minor toughness. So with toughness, we'd be sitting closer to about maybe 40k or so. Uh, and then we have 22.7 max magicka, 23.3 max stamina. So again, make sure your stamina is just a little bit higher than your max magicka. For Mundestone, the Atronac is always a good option for Magicka regen. Uh, even though you can use uh, Balance in order to get some Magicka back, you won't always have a good time to use Balance, so it's always nice to have a little bit of additional padding, so Atronac is always a good option. The Steed Mundus is another Mundestone that I've seen being used very often for additional movement speed, which is becoming a little bit more important for certain uh, for some of the newer trials. Um, so that's another option there. Uh, you can also go with uh, pretty much any sort of Munda Stone that sort of increases your stats here. So for example, the tower uh, is one. Actually, no, not the tower. I believe it is... I think it is a tower that actually gives you max health, um, but I don't I don't remember exactly, so someone can, rec can correct me on that. But the most common Munda Stones that I've seen are either going to be the Atronach or the Steed. And then for food, the Witch... Sugar Skulls, as of the release of this video, uh, might not be out because this is coming out with the uh, Witches Festival for 2019. This might not be out by the time this video is released, but this is coming out uh, with the Witches Festival and it is going to be the best food right now for tanks because it is tri-stat, so you get the max health, max stamina, max magicka, plus you get some additional health regen. Now this is a gold food, so just bear in mind it might be expensive to, to make, so if you can't afford to use bewitched sugar skulls you can just run the purple tri-stat food instead which is a lot cheaper to obtain a little bit weaker a little bit lower max stats but uh, still a good option to run and finally our cps cps are going to remain pretty much constant across the board for all classes there are very few changes that are going to be happening for cps so with the green cps we have 64 in arcanist and 49 in tenacity then we have 66 in the shadow ward and then the rest can be placed wherever you'd like. So I have 44 Tumbling, for example, 44 Warlord, 3 Sprinter. But you can play around with those numbers as you see fit. So for example, you can push Arcanist all the way up to 100 if you'd like to maximize your Magicka regen. You can get some more Tenacity to get some more stamina back when you heavy attack. So a few options to kind of play around with there. For blue CPs, 100 Blessed. You want to get as much healing done because that impacts your self-heals. You want 81 Elfborn to get critical healing with your anything that uses Magicka. So, for example, Polar Wind on Wardens or uh, Wind Dragon Blood on DKs. And you also want 81 in Precise Strikes to get any sort of critical healing done with stamina ability. So, those would be things like Vigor. Uh, and potentially Green Dragon Blood as well, depending on which stat is higher your weapon damage and weapon crit, or your spell damage and spell crit, I should say, your crit specifically. So, you do want to get 81 81 in Precise Strikes and Elfborn. That leaves 8 points remaining, which I personally just put into Piercing because it doesn't really matter where you put them. Finally, our red CPs 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skin, and 64 in a Hardy and Elmuth Defender gives you a very balanced approach to pretty much all content in the game. Uh, for specific content, you might want to shift some red CP points around to kind of maximize your mitigation. Uh, but generally speaking, you are taking quite a bit of different damage types in trials as a tank. So I like to go with the balanced approach here uh, that I have set up here. And that pretty much concludes everything in this video. So again, if you want specific class things, so class skills, for example, you will need to check out those class-specific videos that are going to be down in the description below. Uh, not all of them are released at the time of this video is released, so just bear with me. They will be coming out uh, throughout the week as uh, the weeks continues. A full schedule can be found on the community tabs of my channel. That concludes this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. All the sets that I've mentioned and potentially some that I forgot to mention will be down in the description below as well as where to get them and whether you have to transmute, so basically you a light armor or medium armor sets. Hope you guys found this video informative and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.